Good morning and welcome back to Storytime with Mrs. Haragi. I'm Mrs. Haragi. The book we will be reading today is Mailing Bay. It all started when Ma and Pop promised I could stay a spell with Grandma Mary who lived a million miles away through the rough old Idaho mountains. But when I asked Ma if it was time to go, she just shook her head and sighed real deep. So I tried asking Pa. No money, said Pa. Train tickets cost a dollar fifty-five. A dollar fifty-five, May. I work all day to make that much. Maybe next year. But I just couldn't wait a whole year. So the next morning, when Ma and Pop bundled me in my heavy winter coat and sent me out to play in the snow, I made a beeline for Alexander's department store. Mr. Alexander called his hello atop a ladder. I need a job, I said. I need money for the train. Mr. Alexander smiled as he stepped down to the floor. A job, is it? I wish I could hire you, May, but all the jobs around here are grown-up jobs, like counting money, lifting heavy crates. I must have looked mighty sad because Mr. Alexander reached for a jar of peppermint sticks. The sweet wintry taste didn't do much to cheer me as I slogged my way home. Things only got worse when Pa came back from work that night. He and Ma commenced to whispering and peeking at me off and on. Then they made me go to bed awful early, which I did not like at all. Next morning, Ma shook me awake while it was still real dark. I was puzzled to see Pa's little traveling bag packed and standing by the door. When I asked where he was going, Ma only smiled and said, Eat your breakfast. Just then, someone knocked on our front door. Pa opened up to see Ma's cousin Leonard. Come along, May, Pa said, grabbing the suitcase as Ma helped me with my coat. We're going to the post office with Leonard. He held up a hand as I opened my mouth. No questions, Pa said with a wink. Ma hugged and kissed me before Pa took my hand and led me into the dark winter air. Before long, I stood taking in the funny smells of the Grangeville post office, glue and canvas bags, and oiled wooden floors. Meanwhile, Pa marched right up to Postman Perkins and said, Sam, you got some new rules for mailing packages. I know boxes can weigh up to 50 pounds nowadays, but what sort of things can you send? Mr. Perkins looked at Pa real strange-like as he asked, What do you got in mind, John? It's May, said Pa. We'd like to mail her to Lewiston. Leonard here mans the mail car on the train, as you know. He can take good care of our package. Sure thing, Sam, said Leonard. I was flat flabbergasted by Pa, and so was Mr. Perkins. Mailing May, he mumbled, shaking his head. Let's see. The postal code says not to mail lizards or insects or anything smelly. Mr. Perkins looked at me over his glasses and sniffed. Guess he passed the smell test. But what about girls, I asked. Can you mail me? Well, the rule book says nothing about children, but it is permissionable to mail baby chicks. Mr. Perkins smiled. Let's find out exactly how much you and your, val your vessel weigh. I scrambled up on top of the big scale and Pa set his traveling bag next to me. 48 pounds and 8 ounces. Biggest baby chick on record. Mr. Perkins ran his finger down a chart hanging near the scale and turned to Pa. To mail May from Grangeville to Lewiston will cost 53 cents. Well, Leonard, looks like we'll be in charge of some poultry on this mail run. Before I knew it, Mr. Perkins had glued 53 cents worth of stamps on the back of my coat, along with a label that read, Deliver to Mrs. Venegan in Lewiston, Idaho. Pa hugged me and told me to be good to Grandma Mary. Then he was gone, and there I was, a package sitting in the post office. Before long, Leonard carted me and the rest of the mail to the train station. 
The big black steam engine was already waiting, hissing and snorting like a boar hog. The sight made me go all tingly, seeing as I'd never ever ridden a train before. After Leonard loaded the mailbags and a few other packages, he called up, Time to go, May. Then he helped me up the steel steps. At exactly seven o'clock, the train chugged away from my home and headed down the mountain. I felt as adventurous as Daniel Boone. The inside of the mail car was a little like a post office, and Leonard got busy right away sorting mail to be dropped off at town along the way. I curled up nearby the stove to keep warm and watched. Whenever Leonard had a free minute, he'd take me to the door for a look. My, oh my, what sights there were to see. Why, we hung on the edge of the mountainside and crawled through the tunnels. We crossed deep valleys on top of tall, spidery trestles that Leonard called Steel on Stilts. Then, la then long about Lapway Canyon, where the train track twists back and forth down the mountain, I began to feel somewhat less adventuresome. Instead, I was feeling dizzy and weak in the stomach. I was about to run to get some fresh air when I heard an angry voice at the door. Leonard, yelled a man in a uniform. That girl better have a ticket or money to buy one. It was Mr. Harry Morris, the train conductor. I hid behind Leonard as he explained that I was a package, not a passenger. Then he showed Mr. Morris the stamps on my coat. The cranky old conductor slapped his knee and laughed out loud. I've seen everything now, said Mr. Morris, wiping his eyes. Well, Mr. Morris plum scared the dizziness right out of me. Even my stomach seemed better, and I started feeling hungry. Leonard said lunch would be at Grandma Mary's. The train made a few more stops at towns like Sweetwater and Joseph before he pulled into Lewiston Railroad Station. Since this was the end of the line, Leonard had time to be to be my mail carrier, and we headed for Grandma Mary's place. The second I laid eyes on Grandma Mary, I felt downright warm inside. Ma and Pa had kept their promise after all, with a little help from the post office. Thank you so much for reading Mailing May with me. Please join me tomorrow for another book. Like this video and subscribe below. I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.